War-torn Afghanistan is an unlikely tourist destination, but there is hope that its world heritage sites and the first national park can attract tourists and help the local economy. Here's our story. The air gets thinner up here. At 2,500 meters or 8,000 feet above sea level, the views are stunning. The jagged mountain peaks are simply magnificent. Much like the Rockies in North America. But make no mistake, this is not the Grand Canyon. This is Afghanistan, not on the usual tourist route. The natural beauty and serene scenery of Bamiyan that has the potential of attracting tourism to the area. Dr. Habiba Sorabi is the first and only female governor in Afghanistan. She's been the driving force behind reviving tourism in Bamiyan since her appointment four years ago. We talk about ecotourism so the people that are living in these areas can benefit. For example, in different villages or valleys, there can be small guest houses that are run by the community. What makes this place unique is the enormous Buddhist monastery with thousands of caves carved into the mountain centuries ago. It was once known for the world's tallest standing Buddha statues, symbolizing the importance and prosperity of the ancient route connecting East and West, the famous Silk Road. But in 2001, tragedy struck. The Taliban, the fundamentalist Islamist group, determined to destroy everything non-Muslim, in particular all material images of idols, blew up the 1,500-year-old statues. I can say that the presence of Buddha is our history. It is our cultural heritage. It is an integral part of cultural history of the people of Bamiyan. The remains of the statues were declared a UN World Heritage Site in 2003. UNESCO, together with the Afghan government, is trying to conserve the Buddha niches with their cave art while paving the way for tourism. Development for the people, jobs, employment, diversification of the economy uh, from potential industries like tourism. Brendan Kassar, UNESCO's archaeologist in Kabul, says Bamiyan is ripe for development if done carefully. But at the same time, having a sensitive uh, treatment and, and development for the landscape, the archaeological uh, and historical cultural landscape of the valley. The site has been listed as a World Heritage Site in danger, partly due to the significant presence of landmines. After decades of war, Afghanistan is one of the most heavily mined countries in the world. This has a huge impact on the daily lives of the locals. The UN Mine Action Coordination Center of Afghanistan and UNESCO are clearing another World Heritage Site here, just across from the Buddha niches. Shari Kholgola, or City of Screams, was famously destroyed by Chinggis Khan in the 13th century. The historical artifacts discovered during the demining are giving archaeologists a fantastic insight into the rich history here, which can be traced back to both Buddhist and Muslim periods. For the adventurous, there are other things to see, but it takes about three hours to drive the rugged, poorly maintained dirt roads to the spectacular Bandi Amir lakes. A cluster of six deep blue lakes tucked into the Hindu Kush mountains makes up the first national park of Afghanistan. Separated by natural dams, the interconnected lakes are fed by crystal clear waterfalls. It 
It's here that tourists can enjoy Buz Kashi, the Afghan version of polo. During the first Silk Road Festival this past summer, hundreds of Afghans from all over the region came to this favorite weekend destination. To expand tourism, certain amenities are necessary to make it possible for the visitors. One of them is transportation. Better roads will bring more tourists. Once here, they can enjoy the local food, swan-shaped paddle boats, and hiking trails. Albeit modest, there are a few guest houses and hotels. Some sell local crafts, providing a much-needed source of income for the people here. Saeed Ismail earns a modest living working as a guard at the giant Buddha's site. For a small fee, he takes tourists like this one on a guided tour of the Buddha niches. I'm here just for our weekend in Bamiyan, which is a great uh, landscape. It has a great landscape and it's very nice to come. Because of his job as a guard, the government has allowed Mr. Ismail and his family to live in two adjoining caves about 50 meters from the small Buddha niche. But there's been a lot of discussion worldwide about the future of the site and whether or not the two Buddha statues should be reconstructed. As far as UNESCO's project is concerned, we're much more concerned about emergency conservation and intervention in the, in the site and this in itself provides options for the Afghan authorities in, in the future. The fragments of the statues, as well as the artifacts found during the demining, are temporarily stored near the Buddha niches. Someday, they'll be on display in a museum nearby. This will create more jobs for the locals, some of whom are already being trained as tourist guides.